This is example 3.7-3 from the text Conceptual Dynamics. The problem statement reads, if the end of rope A is pulled down with a speed of one meter per second, determine the speed at which block B rises. And so over here, you know, once we read the problem statement, we look at the associated figure and try to make sure we understand what's happening. We see that point A is being pulled down with some given speed. We identify what we're given, VA is equal to one meter per second. And we want to determine the rate at which block B rises. So that's what we want to find. And so we can see that particle A and mass B are connected via this system of ropes and pulleys. And so this is what we classify as a dependent motion problem. Because of this physical connection, the motion of block B is going to be related to the motion of block A. Just at a first glance, we might get a sense of, of how they're related. We can sort of see that as we pull point A downward, uh, this rope is going to get pulled downward and it's going to cause block B to rise. We may also be able to sort of get the sense that uh, block B will rise more slowly than, block, than point A goes down because the, the length of rope is, is sort of doubled and tripled over. So for each unit that particle A moves down, that distance is spread out across these different segments of rope. It's a little bit um, harder to see exactly what the relationship is going to be because of the motion of, of this point C and the second length of rope. But by following the approach given in the textbook, we can calculate what the relationship is precisely. Specifically, we'll follow the procedure where we start with the first step of identifying datums. So the datum is sort of the, the origin or the reference with respect to which we uh, measure all the lengths. In this case, all of the sort of particles of interest, A, B, and C, are all moving vertically, up or down. And so we only need a single datum. And I'm going to go ahead and define the datum to be that fixed location. If we had different particles that were some moving horizontally, some moving vertically, etc., then we'll need more than one datum. The second step Step two is to identify coordinates. That is, we want to assign variables to the different lengths of interest. So one is the sort of the position of particle A. So I'll define that to be SA. Another is the position of of pulley C, I'll define its position to be SC, and then finally block B, I'll define it to be SB. The third step is then to determine expressions for the length of rope in terms of these position coordinates. We'll just say determine length equations. In this case, we have two separate lengths of rope. We have this brown piece of rope and this black piece of rope. So the brown piece of rope I'll call rope one, the black one I'll call rope two. And so we can express the length of rope one. We have this length right there, and you can see that that's equal to um, the position of A subtracting the position of C. We then have this length around the pulley, which is a constant, and so we're just going to lump all the constants together at the end. I then have this length here, which is equal to the position of B subtracting the position of C.
and then again a constant length of rope, and then this final piece, which is length B plus a constant. Okay. We then re repeat that procedure for the second piece of rope here. And so again, we have this length, which is equal to the position of particle C. We have a constant length. And then we have this length, which is equal to the position of particle B. We add on the constant. Once we've done that, step four is to differentiate. You know, ultimately, we are given a velocity and desire a velocity. And so in order to take these length relationships that we've determined, these position relationships, um, we can differentiate them to get relationships between the velocities of the various particles. So I take the first length, differentiate that whole equation. L1 is just a constant. The length of, of that piece of rope is not changing, so its derivative is just 0. We differentiate SA, get SA dot, differentiate negative SC, get SC dot, differentiate SB, differentiate negative SC, differentiate SB again. This constant, again, when we differentiate it, it's just equal to 0. We can combine some of the like terms here. We get that SA dot. We've got two SB dots. We've got two negative SC dots. All of that equals 0. Then we do the same thing for the length of rope 2. Again, L2, the length of that second piece of rope, is just constant, so its derivative is 0. We have the derivative of SC, the derivative of SB, the derivative of that constant is equal to 0. So looking at these two equations that we have now, um, we essentially have it in terms of three variables, SA dot, SB dot, and SC dot. SA dot is the rate at which this length is changing. And so it's equal to the velocity with which point A is going downward. And since point A is going downward, that means SA is getting larger. So it's SA dot is a positive number. And it's just equal to VA, the VA that's given. SB dot is the VB that we want to determine. So this is given. This we want to find. The SC dot is not relevant. So we want to eliminate it between these two equations. So we can solve the second equation here. For SC dot, subtract the SB dot to the other side. SC dot is equal to negative SB dot, which makes sense. You know, as you know, as this piece of length right here changes, however much point C moves down, point B must move up, then equal amount. So one unit movement of point C downward corresponds to one unit of point B moving upward. So we take this relationship and we sub into equation 1, get that SA dot plus 2SB dot, substitute negative SB in for SC, that becomes a positive SB dot. And so solving this, we have 4SB dot. We can subtract the SA dot to the other side. 
divide by the 4. Okay, which sort of makes sense. Um, we plug in what we know SA dot to be. And so we have that SB dot, which is also VB, is negative 0 0.25 meters per second. A negative value for SB dot means that this length is getting shorter. So a positive value means that the length is getting longer or larger. A negative value means that the length is getting shorter. So we can say that VB is negative 0.25 meters per second, or we could just say VB 0.25 meters per second up. And this matches the intuition that we had at the beginning. We, we thought that a movement of point A downward would cause point B to move up. And that's what we found. And we thought that a movement of point A down would cause a smaller movement of point B upward because the length of, of distance that point A moves downward has to be spread out across these other, these other lengths of rope. So that brings this example to conclusion.